Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, my question really is uh, through you to James again. Uh, James, seven years, and these are what, 55 grand roughly, and I know there's two parts, truck and stretcher, I'll use that term. That's $8,000 a year over seven years, right? That's a little steep, is it not, for a, on a seven-year life for a stretcher? Uh, through the chair, that, that would be like... A... You'd think you'd get a little more life, is what I'm saying. As uh, uh, Ms. Townsend mentioned, there, could be, there would be more life out of the asset. However, at the time that we purchase it, we have to go by what we know at the time. So I believe there's evidence that these stretchers last seven years, so that's what we would have to go by in order to set our depreciation limit. Okay, my uh, other question to Sarah is, uh, Sarah, you mentioned it's been in uh, existence for, what, 10 years? Through you, Mr. Chair, that is correct. And what's, how, how have you found, uh, like, maintenance on these things? Uh, like, when you say seven years, I'm sure there's times you mentioned when stretchers break down, you want to have an extra one or two around. How, have you talked to your colleagues to uh, find out a little bit more about the maintenance on these? Through you, Mr. Chair, to Council, we have um, spoken to several different EMS services. All of our stretchers, whether the current or the new system, are inspected um, every three months. That will continue. We have also sent one of our leadership staff and our mechanic that works on the ambulances to the striker maintenance program so that they can do all the ongoing and preventative maintenance on the stretcher and the loading system itself. Um, we don't foresee huge expenditures in maintenance. The largest expenditure is going to come come from battery replacement over the life of the unit. The batteries are expected to last three to four years instead of the full seven. So there will be the $100 battery replacement every three to four years. And uh, but are there other mechanical parts that uh, you found that might have to be replaced due over time? Like there must be some out fi figure out there that uh, tells you over a seven year period you're going to spend X number of dollars maintaining these stretchers. One stretcher must have some form of maintenance on it. Through the chair to council, I actually don't have a yearly maintenance number in front of me. Um, I will tell you that part of the study that came out from Hamilton Niagara done through the University of Waterloo was the cost effectiveness of the stretcher system and between the maintenance, the upkeep and the paramedic WSIB claims, the stretcher paid for itself in 6.5 years. Okay, and uh, back to James there, uh, there's 12,000 in the capital budget, wouldn't that come off to 330 right off the bat? Like if there's, so aren't we talking $12,000 less to start off? Through the chair, yes, you need to take off that 12, that 12,000 be replaced by those dollar amounts. And if I could make, Go ahead. Mr. Chair, the uh, question of Councillor Height earlier about the balance in the capital replacement reserve is in a deficit of approximately $3 million projected by the end of 2017. Mr. Chairman, if I may finish. Uh, the other one is, did I understand, Sarah, correct? There's, is there going to be like a cooperative purchasing through other EMS or, uh, organizations? Is that... Like you're asking for an exemption to the purchasing policy. And I'm wondering, um, to me, I realize it's nice to have this particular product, but uh, when the supplier knows what you want, uh, it's not negotiable usually. So I'm wondering, uh, how, are you going to do this co-op? Like, are we just talking to buying six ourselves, or are we talking going in with other EMS to buy X number? Through you, Mr. Chair to Council. The research has been completed and the sole provider of this system in Ontario that is certified and regulated by the ministry is Roland's Emergency Products. Now they are the same ones that do the emergency conversion on all of our ambulances, the lights, the electronics, everything like that and certify that for the province of Ontario through the ministry. Um, we will be talking to our counterparts to ensure that the quotes we have received are similar to the quotes that they were given. Well, you haven't answered my question. Are you going to cooperatively go in with other EMS, or are we strictly doing this on our own 
for six six units and uh, like there must be other EMS that are buying the units and would it be beneficial to go in with them or are you going in with them? That's my question. Through you, Mr. Chair, there is an opportunity for us to join into the Peel Regional RFP. That has been completed and they are outfitting their entire fleet currently, but we understand, I do not have the RFP yet, it is being sent to me, that they put language in there that the same pricing would be available for any EMS service across Ontario. So while we are not cooperatively buying with another service, it is looking like we will be able to jump on the same pricing, which may reduce our costs in the end. So you'd bring that back then? Correct? Through you, Mr. It. Chair, if there's a reduction in cost, we can bring that back. Thank you. Okay, my speakers list. Councillor Oliver, Black, Wells, and then the Mayor. Councillor Oliver. Thanks, Mr. Chairman, for letting me ask a further question. It, it's very similar to the lines that Councillor Breton just put to you, Sarah. Uh, given that you, I, I think you said there are two companies, Stryker and Firo, is it, that, are, that both offer a power lift system, power stretcher? Through you, Mr. Chair, that is correct. Ferno, Ferno sorry. Um, which is our current provider yep. of stretcher, also has a stretcher available on the market. It has only been available in Ontario for the past three years and is only being used in one service in Ontario currently. The um, issue that we had with that product is, while it is somewhat of a powered stretcher, it still requires all the lifting into the back of the truck, okay. whereas the Stryker system as a whole is a right. zero lift system. Right. Okay, that answers that question. But again, the question of a cooperative a bidding process, I think is one that, that I suspect council would like you to pursue a little more aggressively before the purchase is made, assuming we do eventually give you approval to go ahead. Uh, and, and because we know there's strength in numbers, that's just simply a, a rule of the marketplace. And I would, I would hope that before uh, the purchase is made, that you would investigate with your colleagues, perhaps all around us, for example, the five counties that are involved in the SCORE region, as an example, it seems to me if any of them are in the same position that we are contemplating making this switch within the next 12 months, for example, you would, you would have a more competitive bid to put in front of Stryker, Roland, than just on our own. And may or may not be better than what Peel has offered to us. So I think that would be something I, for one, would ask that, that even assuming we approve this today, and I'm not sure whether we will or not, but that that be done uh, before a purchase is actually made. My other final little point, Mr. Chair, it would be helpful to me if I could receive a copy of the University of Waterloo report. I assume you've got that on Through you, Mr. Chair, sort. I will circulate that Thank to you. you. Um, and as to your other point, I will assure you that Roland's emergency product services services all the EMS services in Ontario. And so I'm assuming that the quote that they gave us would be this same quote they have given every other EMS service as all services go to them for the same product. Well, you may assume that, but I don't. So that would be my point. I would like to see you make that formal inquiry of other EMS in our part of southwestern Ontario. If two or more of us can bid together, I would suggest that would be worth investigating. Through you, Mr. Chair, absolutely. Councillor Black. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to put the recommendation on the floor, if I may, and speak to it, get the you debate can, going. We still have other speakers who may have some questions, but if you want to put it on the floor, we will continue with the... Uh, the uh, well, let's, let's, let's get it going. So, may right. I speak to it? Yes, you can. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I do have another question. I just wondered about the old stretchers. Is there any value in those? Through you, Mr. Chair, we will be investigating selling back our old stretchers to other. Okay, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to speak in favor of the recommendation, and I know it's, it's, a, it's a shocker for the price. There's no doubt about that. Um, and I think anybody, would, uh, when they first see the cost, uh, would be shocked by it. But, you know, after reading all the reports and the, the demonstration today, I think you can see, I think anybody could see if, if they uh, were to have the same demonstration and education that we've had on, on, these, uh, in, on this equipment, they would see that uh, there's definitely value for the patients. It's a better patient service. Um, it's been explained to, to us that it will lower our WSIB claims, which is a definite value to 
Norfolk County and the taxpayers. Um, we will have a healthier, uh, probably more productive ambulance service uh, with this equipment. Uh, I have to say I was very impressed comparing this type of equipment with, with the old. I mean, I looked at the old equipment. I was, uh, I was uh, fearful for the life of our county manager there for a moment, but uh, I was pretty secure when uh, that other piece of equipment lifted him. It kind of blew me away. I didn't think that something like that could um, actually lift a man uh, as small as our county manager the way it did. <laughs> including myself, <laughs> but in seriousness, I'm very impressed by by the equipment and the presentation that was given to us by the ambulance service. Thank you, Elsa Wells. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mayor or Mr. Chair. Before I uh, speak to the motion that's on the floor, I would like to ask James a question. Go ahead. I am confused, of course, uh, and most of you know it's easy to confuse me by what James said with regard to the capital reserves. He said that we have money in the capital reserves, but that's the vehicle capital reserve budget. Am I correct on that? Uh, through the chair, we've historically used the EMS reserve for vehicle purchases. We haven't, pur we haven't purchased any EMS equipment using that reserve. However, this time uh, we believe this is a case that we can use the reserve for the stretchers as it's, it's pretty well related to the ambulances. But if we take the money out for the stretchers, where do we then get the money to buy the new vehicles? You can't suck and blow at the same time. Uh, through the chair, you are absolutely correct. Uh, we would have to take a look at the contributions from the levy for that reserve if we're going to be using it to also buy equipment. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, Mr. Chair, I heard the motion put forth by Councillor Black, and I'll not be able to support the motion. And not that these do not have merit, not that maybe someday they will be here in Norfolk County, but for me, here's my problem. We spend, as councillors, days upon days upon days at budget sessions. We go through the budget, line by line by line. We fight with each other to get our budget down. Now, all of a sudden, the budget days are over and we have money. Well, we don't have money, because if we take money now, we'll have the problem when we get to the budget. I think this is June. We just finished the budget. So certainly bring this back at budget time, and I would be certainly willing to support it then, but I'm not willing to export this out of our budget at this time. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mayor Luke. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, one question, then a comment on the motion through you to our treasurer, Mr. Johnson. Very simply put, the increase in the levy for these six purchases for 2017 would be the $165,000. Through the chair to Mr. Mayor, yes, you are correct. Okay, thank you. Well, Mr. Chair, I am going to support the motion on the floor. Uh, I have to say, when I read the report on the weekend, I was somewhat in shock. Um, and it is unusual for us to be considering uh, an expenditure of this size um, sort of halfway between budget sessions. It's not the norm. But I think having seen the demonstration and feeling that over the next several years, this is, to me, obvious the way that paramedic business is going and it's long overdue. So for the sake of, and I know that the reserve money comes from the taxpayer's wallet, just like the levy, but for the sake of getting started on this for 165000 for six stretchers, uh, the difference between the conventional or the old stretcher and what this stretcher will do for this profession and for the people that it's serving, I think, is, is good money spent. We know that the savings in lost time injuries, studies have shown that, I think the figure was 80% reduction. We know the savings in WSIB will offset some of this increased cost. We also know that 
it will prolong the life, I think, of paramedics so they can complete their careers without having to go off because they no longer can do the job. I would also think, Mr. Chair, that I noticed out there a lot of young people on our staff, and that's a good thing, but I would think someone that's probably 100 pounds soaking wet that could be a good paramedic might say, but I'm not sure I want to be on the other end of a 250-pound person every day and having to lift them in and out of an ambulance. So I think it's, um, there's a lot of benefits here. Councillor Wells, I couldn't agree with you more that uh, this is something that should have been considered at budget time and certainly some more money put away for the 2017 budget. I want to finish, Mr. Chair, by just saying that I have always, I think, been very supportive for fire equipment, rescue equipment, and I think it's just a matter of time that this is the standard that's going to be in every ambulance in this province. And I think that uh, for the 165 over expenditure of the levy this year, I'm willing to support this. Councillor Height. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have uh, one question and then I'll comment too. But um, my question is to the Chief of EMS. I'm having a bit of a difficulty with the numbers that you've put forward per unit. Basically, there's 330,000 one year, 135, 110, and 80. So we're basically averaging 50K each. I'm thinking that there's going to be 14 units instead because maybe we're looking for an extra ambulance down the road. But what I'm wondering is if you couldn't do, if you couldn't get by over a longer period of time, like say phase these in over seven years, because one of the problems that I see is that we're going to go out and buy six right off the hop. Seven years later, we're going to have to replace all six. And if it was staggered out where we put in two or three each year, it would definitely be easier to budget that. Through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the numbers that are in the proposed implementation do include two spare stretchers that won't be currently in an ambulance. So there's 13 in total. We currently have 16 stretchers that we staff right now because we have dedicated bariatric units that support extra weight. Those are not going to be required any longer because these new stretchers hold the 700 pounds plus all our equipment, which is what the bariatric units we have right now also hold. They are at the end of the lifespan and will have to be replaced within the next year. So they, that replacement will be nullified as well. Um, in terms of why we're asking for six at that, this point, that also allows every base in the county to have one. It's a training issue. It's a health and safety issue. If one day a paramedic comes in and is using one kind of stretcher, the next day they're using another one. What we're attempting to do is protect the health and safety across the board across the county. Okay, okay, I can I can see that, but like we can train anywhere. I'm assuming, but okay. So eighty thousand dollars in 2020. Are you buying one unit, or are you buying one and part of another unit? Through you, Mr. Chair, it's the way our vehicle rotation goes. There are certain years where we're only replacing one ambulance. They are also on a seven-year rotation. So some of those years, we only require one ambulance to be replaced. So that is one ambulance being done and one spare stretcher, which is why the number looks weird. So the stretcher itself is $25,000. So that year is one full system and then one spare stretcher. I see. So, you, But you don't think that you can space it out over a further length of time? I think the other problem that becomes as we further space them out is the fact that then you are going to be doubling up systems where we'll have the initial ones that will be being replaced at the same time. So right now, as we're doing it, we'll be spreading it out over 2015, 2016, and 2017 ambulances. And then as they're coming due, four to five years from now, we'll have all the research back as to whether these power lift systems in the trucks will last longer than the seven years. The stretcher will be able to ma be main replaced, I'm sorry, every seven years, but we're hoping the power lift will then be able to be retrofitted in the new truck. Thank you for that. Uh, I guess, Mr. Chair, I, well, I support the idea of having the better technology and some cost savings and things like that. It's just, we know that there is no money left in the piggy bank. We're sitting at a, a minus $3 million. We're not addressing the problem. We can't get a reserve report. 
and we need to do something about that. We, we shouldn't be writing checks we can't cash. What we should be doing is saving money for these expenditures. And we haven't done that, and so I, I can't support this like this, but it's something that this council really needs to address. We're, we're, we're spending beyond our means. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Councilor Sonnenberg, then Brunton. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Sarah, that was a very impressive demonstration. Thank you to you and everyone who participated. Um, but I'm wondering if this device, this new technology, is as healthy and as back-saving as you suggested. Given there's a body on the second floor and the stretcher's out on the sidewalk, you still have to lift that body into that chair device, get it down the stairs, then lift it from the chair device into the stretcher. Am I, have I got the scenario right? Through you, Mr. Chair, to Council, that is correct, and that is the same procedure we are doing currently. So as awesome as this thing is, it doesn't really, really solve the problem. There's still a lot of lifting to be done. But uh, that's just, just a comment. Thank you. Councilor Brunton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I think anything that can make a job easier is certainly welcome. Uh, unfortunately, the cost is what we're wrestling with. Sarah, a question to you, if I may, through the chairman. Um, if we were to order these today, are they like delivered tomorrow or are they uh, like our fire trucks that take a year to deliver? What are the delivery times? Through you, Mr. Chair, and speaking to Roland's emergency services, if we ordered six systems currently, we actually would only order, have to order five because we have a trial system in place right now that would be one of the purchases. Um, the five would be installed before the end of September. They usually, the vehicle goes to Roland's in Toronto and it is usually there 24 hours. They do it in one day. So that's what I mean. Do they have to manufacture these or get them, bring them in from the states? And so you said the end of September. That is their projection. Okay. So if we uh, and there's some unanswered questions. I think Councillor Oliver asked a few questions that um, that we thought we could get some more information back from you. I also would like to know, based on a 10-year study of one of these what the long-term maintenance costs are you mentioned the cost of a battery um, I, there must be other costs associated with them but i i guess uh, i i can support it but i i'm starting to wonder if we in two another month if you brought back a report with further information and uh, that would put this off to october it's, the expenditure almost would be pushed into next year anyways. Is that a possibility? Through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, by delaying it until after break, we could ascertain the information you're requiring about long-term maintenance. The one good thing in step forward that we've made, because we had a trial system in place, we have already internally trained our mechanic and our supervisor, so that would become part of their duties doing all the preventative maintenance. So by keeping that in-house, it negates the fact that we would have to send a stretcher back or send a, take a vehicle out of service in order to repair it. Okay, but uh, the other question I might have is... Um is there any other, and we haven't seen your budget since we uh, passed it, or at least I haven't, and uh, are there any other areas in your budget where you might be underspent where we could utilize some of the uh, surplus funds? Through the Chair to Council, at this point, um, considering the additional standards that were put out by the Ministry this year that is requiring us to purchase additional equipment in the ambulance, likely not. Well, likely is not an answer. I'd like to, uh, James, uh, you've looked at the budget. Is there, uh, are there surplus funds in this budget that haven't been uh, allocated? Uh, through the chair, the, so far in the budget, the 2017, we would have to take a closer look. Like it, it's hard just to take a look now because there may be some entries not in there or so on and so forth. We'd have to prorate some, some, seat, some, um, some items to be as at the end of June, for example. So uh, what you are asking for is a variance report, which we currently do not do, but we will be doing hopefully for 2018, uh, where we could actually provide council with that exact information on a regular basis. Well, 
is it possible there are some surplus funds in the uh, EMS budget? Is it likely? Isn't that the word she used? Uh, through the chair, we would have to go back and, and take a look at the budget and forecast what uh, the expenditures that Ms. Townsend is talking about and uh, give you an answer at a later time. So there's another unanswered question. Add that to Mr. Oliver's, and I guess I, I, I can support it, but I still would like to see some of these questions answered. Thank you. County Manager. Council, I didn't have the pleasure of being your employee back during the budget process, but I understand it was four days of considerable thoroughness. And the business case put forward to operate EMS is premised on the amount of money it actually takes to operate EMS for the year. Um, what I would suggest, so the answer that both those managers are trying to give, although without using the exact words, is they have the money they need to operate the, the service as it is, and, and, and there isn't anything available for that. However, I would like to encourage this council to explore further with the county treasurer the opportunities for financing to come from the WSIB reserve, which at the moment has a healthy surplus in it and may be a partial solution to your problem. I have a question. Number one, when I was out there, I seen two different ambulances. One was certainly better built than the other one. Now, will these actually work? Or are we going to have to get the more, how should I put it, uh, better built ambulance? <laughs> to you, Mr. Chair, the one ambulance that's out there is a 2012, so it is five years old and due for replacement in two years. The body style has changed in the ambulance, but the weight requirements and chassis and everything remains still durable enough to support this system of all our vehicles. Okay, thank you. Councillor Columbus. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. To Sarah, to maintain the ambulance vehicle replacement reserve account, <clears throat> is there any way we can hold off on, I believe you said that we're going to be purchasing one ambulance in the 2018 budget, is that it? Or I know at times we purchased two. Is there any way we can hold off on the purchase of an ambulance in order to maintain that account? Through you, Mr. Chair, um, from what I can see of how I planned out the stretchers, it is two new vehicles in 18, two in 19, and one in 2020. The ambulances were changed from a five-year replacement to a seven-year replacement, and we are keeping close tabs on the maintenance costs and, su and such at the end of their life. I would highly recommend we don't delay that another year and push it to eight-year replacement. Thank you. Walter Height. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you for allowing me to speak again. Um, further to what our county manager said, uh, over to the treasurer, how much money is in the WSIB reserve account? Uh, through the chair, at the end of 2017, it's uh, estimated to be approximately $1.2 However, it all depends on the amount of accommodations that we have that is funded from the reserve, and it also depends on the contributions to, to the reserve from, uh, from the, uh, the employees. Okay, so understanding that, I guess we would have to change this uh, and further that the 2017 stretcher replacement program project be funded from EMS vehicle and reserve or equipment reserve in the amount of 165,000 and from the tax levy in the amount of 165. That could be changed to the full amount coming from the WSIB reserve. Go ahead. Uh, through the chair, what we were going to do is fund it from the ambulance reserve. Um, and then we were going to look at the actual WSIB savings that we would incur from these stretchers, and then we, through the, uh, the reserve report coming to council before the break, uh, we would identify perhaps uh, the option for the reserve to have a transfer from the WSIB reserve to the ambulance reserve uh, that represents those savings uh, that would occur because of this purchase. So do we need that option in this motion? Uh, through the chair, I don't believe so. We would be taking care of that uh, issue with the reserve report. Okay, but it's just we don't have a concrete, I don't know, solution right now? Is that what you're saying? It would take some time? Through the chair, yes, that's correct. We would have to research that 
uh, a little bit more and make sure all our uh, I's are dotted and T's are crossed before we would go through with that option. How much time do you need? Um, we will have that information uh, alongside with the, with the reserve report coming to council before the break. I'm not sure, Mr. Chair. I'm suspect of that reserve report. I've been waiting a long time. I've got a lot more gray hair now. But um, uh, over to the EMS chief, would it be a problem if we deferred for one month to find some creative financing? Through you, Mr. Chair, um, the only issue that would arise is the current, the current trial unit that we have is leaving in September unless we make a decision before then. That's even better. We can get rid of the demo and get a brand new one then. With that, Mr. Chair, I'll move that we defer this motion for one month for uh, our accounting or our treasurer to come back with some creative financing solutions. Councilor, sorry. James? Uh, Mr. Chair, through the Councilor Height, um, I don't think it's a question that we will be getting savings uh, through the WSIB claims with this purchase. The, what we would need to know is what those savings are, and then we would be able to take the savings from, and fund the EMS reserve from the WSIB reserve. So as far as um, doing more research, as far as the accounting of this, uh, this project, uh, I don't think that would really mitigate th this purchase as far as getting any savings. I don't think there's a question that we would get savings. It's just a matter of the accounting of it, which I don't want to delay a, a project for, for an accounting exercise. Councilor Sonnenberg. Yes, thank you for letting me speak again. And just to, just to let you know that I will be supporting this. This is a question of health and safety for our citizens and our paramedics. And when it comes to health and safety, I will not cut corners. Uh, come budget time, we will slash and burn somewhere else, but we will find the money for this project. Which brings the subject of uh, maybe two fire halls within a stone's throw of one another up again. We look into that one more time. Thank you. Okay, I have no more speakers. Councillor Black has moved that staff report C. Ed, sorry, go ahead. I wasn't sure that he was going to do that. Have you done that? Are That's you, what I said. Okay, sorry, then I missed it. Can I have the clerk read it, please? Uh, through the chair to committee, moved by Councillor Height, that the report be deferred for one month to allow for uh, more funding consideration. You're talking about a month, and we're on break halfway through, uh, I guess, uh, July. July 14th is the last council meeting. Well, so I'd like it by then, but I don't want to stress you guys, but it can wait until after the meet, after or before. It's up to you. I'll leave that open. Okay. Can we uh, July 11th? Is that okay with you? Works for me. Okay. Yes. If 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 and that is to uh, address Councillor Heights' issue regarding the WSIB, correct? Can we ask those other questions, Councillor Oliver's concerns uh, that he raised and the one I raised regarding maintenance? Would those things all come back on July 11th also? I'm not the one who's got to do it, so you, I'm looking at the county, manage, the county manager, and uh, can you tell us when we can get that done? I guess that's the problem. It's a two-part answer. As the motion stands, no, it's, it's be, uh, unless it's amended, the motion as it is is for us to do a specific task by July 11th, and I, I'm sure staff will collectively undertake to get that task done. If you add to it, of course, it increases the challenge of getting it down, done for July 11th, but we would do our best to comply, knowing it may or may, or may not be possible. Um, I, I guess that's the answer. I have Councillor Black and then Councillor Oliver. 
Mr. Chairman, I won't be supporting the deferral. I think it, uh, I think Councillor Sonnenberg said it quite emphatically. Um, you know, the health of our community and, and uh, the age co cohort just so happens to be right about where I'm at. And that's the largest cohort there is. Um, we're going to be needing more health care in the future and not less. Uh, if we can make it a lot easier and simpler, reduce overall costs for the future, then we need to get on with it. I have faith in, uh, in our Treasury Department that he will do the right thing. Uh, that's what we hired him for. Um, he voluntarily gave us the information about WSIB. Um, he didn't have to say that. He gave us a, another option. So, you know, with that option, I'm sure if there are available funds there, then he will bring them forward. So we need to get on with this. Councillor Oliver. Councillor Brunton, can you turn your mic off, oh, please? Sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Before Councillor Height put his motion for deferral forward, I was going to, uh, before we called the question on the motion, ask if we needed an amendment to direct uh, our, our uh, manager of EMS to do that inquiry of neighbouring EMS services before she made the purchase. Uh, so I, I do want to ask, Mr. Chair, either from you or the Deputy Clerk, uh, should the motion for deferral fail, and I'm not saying it will or it won't, then uh, would it be appropriate to put an amendment into the motion directing her to make those inquiries about a cooperative purchase rather than go proceeding on her own? Could we have that as an amendment? Yes, we could. All right, thank you. Mayor Luke. Well, Mr. Chair, I won't be supporting the amendment. We, uh, sorry, the deferral, pardon me. The defer I won't be supporting it. Mr. Chair, we know that we're being asked to fund this expense out of our ambulance equipment reserve. And we know that there is $165,000 in there to cover that. So that's not an issue with me. The fly, the fly in the ointment to me was the fact that we did not budget this year. We budgeted $12,000. We did not budget for this expenditure. And I'm fully aware that we have in the past gone along without these striker stretchers. So I'm sure to, until next year we could struggle to get through using them until we approve a budget next year. So the real stick in the mud for me was this 165000 for the tax levy. And I guess that's a decision that each one of us will have to make individually before we vote the risk of spending that money now when it really was not collected this year in the levy. But as far as all these little things of where we're going to move money here and there, that'll all work out, I'm confident. Overall this year, I'm sure, although I can't guarantee, that our overall $81 million levy budget should be, hopefully, we should be in a surplus position. Sometimes we do well in tender, sometimes we don't. I can't guarantee that. But I know one thing, that if we do authorize this $165,000 expenditure from our tax levy that we have not put in there, that we will find a way at capital budget time and next year in our, in our operating budget sessions to compensate for this if we have to. I'm confident that this council has the ability to do that. So I'm, I'm, I'm not going to support the deferral. Okay, there has been no amendment to Councillor Height's uh, motion, so you've heard what... Uh, sorry? Didn't Councillor Oliver amend that? I think he said if it failed, you didn't? correct? So uh, like, the way I feel, it should be staff direction. I know Councillor Brunton was looking for some maintenance costs. Okay. Okay. All those in favor? Those opposed? This is the deferral. Okay. All those in favor? Those opposed? That is defeated. Councillor Oliver. Mr. Chairman, uh, I am going to support Councillor Black's motion. We've had a lot of debate about this, and, and obviously it's a, 
it's a difficult decision because it is a mid-year expenditure and, and not budgeted for. And we're in reality, we're only four months away from capital budget. So I just want to remind my colleagues of that. However, I'm going to support this motion, but I would like to move an amendment, if I could, Mr. Chair, and that is that staff be directed to consult with neighboring EMS services regarding a possible cooperative purchase uh, prior to making our Norfolk County purchase in, in isolation. And I know Sarah will do so, and I would, I mean, once she's done so, if there's no opportunity, I simply want her to report back to us who she spoke with, what the result of that was, and that she had to go ahead. If she is able to find, Mr. Chair, another EMS service to cooperatively purchase with, then I'm going to keep my fingers crossed that the supplier will sharpen their pencil a little bit. So that is my amendment, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Thorpe is uh, writing it out as you speak. Councillor Sonnenberg. Thank you. Did not uh, Sarah suggest that she's already done this and that there would be no cost savings by uh, partnering with anybody else? With York Region, did you not say that? York or Peel? Or who, did you, who did you suggest you were talking with? Through you, Mr. Chair, Peel Region is yes. the RFP that we're waiting to receive from them. They have told us verbally that they included all EMS services in their pricing. I'm waiting to see it for myself. Councillor Black. Now I'll pass, thanks. Okay, Councillor Columbus. Mr. Chairman, I will be supporting the, uh, the motion, the amended motion, and I recently had the experience of moving a 250 pound plus person. It's not that easy, that's for sure. I think about these uh, paramedics every day when I see them out. It is a health and safety issue, so I will be supporting the amended motion, thanks. Okay, well, I'm going to have the clerk read the uh, motion moved by Councillor Black. Do we need to do with the amendment first? We can do the amendment. Okay. Uh, through the chair, moved by Councillor Oliver, that staff be directed to consult with neighboring EMS services regarding a cooperative purchase prior to the purchase of the stretchers. All those in favor? Yes, okay. I really don't see this, the need of it, like uh, Councillor Sonnenberg. Uh, um, I, they're, they're doing it, they're going to do it. Um, I just don't see the need for the amendment. Other questions or comments? All those in favor of the motion? That is carried. Now we go with the main motion as amended. Yes, I'll get to it. <laughs> Madam Clerk, do you want to read it all? <laughs> sure. Thank you. Through the chair to committee, moved by Councillor Black, the staff report CSD 1716, EMS striker power stretcher and load system be received as information and that the approved 2017 capital budget be amended to increase the stretcher replacement program project from 12,000 to 330,000 for the purchase and implementation of six striker pro excuse me striker power pro XT stretchers and six striker power load systems in current Norfolk County EMS ambulances in 2017, and further that the 2017 stretcher replacement program project be funded for the from the EMS vehicle and equipment reserve in the amount of 165,000, and from the tax levy in the amount of 165,000, and further that council exempt staff from the quotation and tendering procedures for goods and services outlined in the Norfolk County Policy EBS 02 Section 4 for a single source specific provider, Roland Emergency Vehicle Product Incorporated, and further that the 10-year capital forecast be amended to reflect the implementation of Stryker Power Pro XT stretchers and Stryker Power Load Systems into all remaining Norfolk County ambulances over the next three years and will then follow the inherent systematic replacement schedule. All those in favor? That is carried. Now, we have a closed session, but I don't think we're ready for that yet, so we were actually keeping uh, people that uh, were coming for a deputation at three, and we're almost at four. So with uh, councillor's uh, agreement that we deal with the deputations first, if that's okay? Okay. Albert Diwali, read digital signs for Langton Sports Park. Please come to the microphone. You may w want to wait a minute or two. <laughs> uh, 
Albert, you have 10 minutes, and there may be some questions afterwards. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I'll let you know when you have one minute left. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Chairman, Mayor Luke, uh, Councillors. I'm here representing the Langton Lions Club, and we have a proposition to present to the Council. Um, I'll give you a little history of the Langton Lions Club. The Lions Club in Langton has been uh, in effect or in, in service for 64 years. This is our 64th year. Um, we have done, most of our work is done with uh, uh, school children or minors, minor ball, minor sports. The area that we're talking about having this sign erected is uh, which we have been involved with over the years. We've built two ball diamonds with lights. We've built the tennis courts with lights. We've built the community center, or at least we're part of it. Built the Langton Arena, which was, I guess, our biggest project over the years. Built a pavilion that's still being used by the public. Renovated the Langton Community Center a couple of times. Helped with renovations for the Langton Arena four times. Uh, we've done the landscaping out in the front of the community center, which... Uh, really improve the looks of it. That's the stuff that around the park area. Then, of course, we've also supported the Langton Minor Hockey, the figure skating clubs, and so on and so forth in the community over the years. Um, the reason that we think that this sign would be beneficial to the community is right now there's a sign on the arena that says Langton Arena, and there's a sign on the community center that says Langton Community Center. There's nothing there that says Langton Lions Club uh, was involved, or the, even Norfolk County was involved. So there's really no uh, recognition other than the local people would know, of course. But uh, anybody going through wouldn't even know that, that there's a park in behind uh, the arena and community center. So that's the main reason that we've uh, uh, requested that we get some uh, cooperation from the county. now. <clears throat> First of all, we'd, we'd like to thank, of course, the councils previous and, and this one as well as in being cooperative with us in anything that we've done in Langton uh, to improve the, the uh, area. And we're hoping that we can count on you to continue this. So our proposition is that the Langton Club has, we have already committed a $10,000 donation towards this project and hopefully the county will see it uh, in their wisdom to fund the rest of the of the uh, project which would be I think it's 11,000 and some dollars would be the, the county's uh, portion and this sign was going to be uh, it's an LED sign so that we could the local organizations, whether it be minor hockey or figure skating or the soccer clubs or whoever, could post on that sign their events or their tournaments or whatever's coming up. Um, it would be not used by the just the general public to for a buck and dough or something like that, I don't think. And in talking with Todd, um, it could be it could be accessed by the county, by the uh, community center manager, and he would be the one that would uh, decide what was going to be put on the sign. Uh, as far as you know, if it's a hockey tournament or a figure skating event or whatever it might be, um, we have other organizations in the community that would get use of it. The, the different uh, most of them are community uh, organizations, so. I don't know if there's any other questions beyond that, or? Well, we'll open it up to questions. You okay. certainly I'll try uh, to answer for you. <laughs> okay. Are there any questions? Mayor Luke. Yeah, I, I'm just not clear on one thing. Through you to the deputation, <coughs> excuse me, uh, Albert, would this sign be keeping it updated, if I could use that word, be done by the Lions Club or by the county or both as fit? Any thoughts? You mean as to repairs or? No, we're putting, uh, sorry, Mr. Chair, uh, no, as to? What was going to be put on the sign? The events. Exactly. No, that was discussed with Todd, and we felt that to, to take the onus off the Lions Club, and uh, the, the community center manager has agreed okay. that he would 
be the one to, to decide. I don't think it would be very good if somebody came up to us and said, can we use a sign, and we would have to say no for whatever reason. It's more, if, if he was making the decision, I think it would be, yeah, and it I would was, make more sense, I think. Thank you, Albert, and I certainly wasn't suggesting that the Lions Club, I agree with your okay. answer. Councillor Oliver. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Along the same lines, Albert, uh, in your discussion with staff, uh, the, the uh, community center manager would be sort of subject to the county's protocol relative to these lit signs, I assume, yes. because we do have a number yes. of them in different yes. locations. So that's good. I, I For agree sure. with the Yeah, mayor that was discussed quite, quite a bit, actually, when we, when we met with Todd and, uh, yeah. Councillor Columbus. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, is, has there been a, a drawing, a sketch done of the Yes, slide? there was. I don't know yeah. whether it's uh, been circulated or not. I don't have it with it. me. It would, be it would be great to have a peek at that. And uh, <coughs> did you can pass it around if you, you want. Know, maybe we're, we could we're, just pass it were around. Were there uh, three, prices, it, so. three prices, two, uh, two prices? Or? You'd have to, I'd have to refer you to Todd on that. That's what I've got for now. Thanks, for Albert. Mm-hmm. Further? If not, thank you very much, uh, Albert. Uh, we will now deal with the, uh, sorry? Okay, I need to receive the deputation. Thank you very much. You thank you. Your seat. Okay. We're gonna deal with the, uh, 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 our Langton Community Center LED information sign, Langton Sports Park. Through the Chair to County Councilor, before I introduce the report, I'd like to introduce Todd Nectel, the Superintendent of Parks Recreation uh, Operations in the West. Uh, I had initially met with the, uh, with the club and uh, soon handed it off to Todd, so Todd's did a lot of the footwork. Uh, anyways, um, th this report, CSD 1715, comes to Council for two purposes. One is the, um, the installation of LED sign that Mr. Diwali's did a, a great job of explaining. The club has uh, committed $10,000 to the sign, which is approximately $21,300, leaving a um, $11,300 for the, uh, we're asking for county council to, to pick up those funds. A, a second part of the report is to approve the name change for the Langton Sports Park to the Lions Sport Park Arena park in arena. Uh, in meeting with the group and in hindsight of all the good work that this club has did in Langton and, and as Mr. Diwali touched on, a lot of the project wouldn't, wouldn't have came to bear any fruit without the Lions Club. That staff are um, agreeable to, to both and, and passing the recommendations that uh, the council agree as well and with that I'll turn it over to questions. Questions? Councillor Height. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, through you to our treasurer, I know that council has some uh, funds in the uh, grants to other grants to other account. So, what would be the difference from using some of that funds as opposed to the levy fund as requested in the report? Uh, through the chair, the grant funds in the for the, for council to use does come off the levy. I believe it's sixty three thousand dollars a year. So. If you were to choose to use that to fund this project, then it would come from there. But it's all levy dolly. Uh, it's all levy dollars. Councilor Columbus. Yes, uh, to Bill or to Todd. Did we get uh, quotes? Two or three quotes on this. I see this one's from Brooks Signs, but were there other estimates given? Through the chair to Councilor Columbus. Uh, no, that was just uh, one initial quote we received. But we Just, are we are keeping in our policy. Yes, this, we? we'll have to get others. Yes. Okay. Thanks very much. Further, Councillor Black. Um, did I hear? Is there a reserve account for this? Did I hear that? I'm looking at James. Is there? No, I don't think there is. This comes off the levy. The no. Lions are per, are uh, contributing ten thousand. And I think the other 11000 is coming off the levy. Okay, so we don't have any reserve money that could pay for this rather than levy? Uh, through the chair, no, we do not. Mayor Luke. Mr. Chair, are you ready for a motion? I'm ready for a motion, sir. 
This is 11,300, whether it comes out of the grant or levy or a reserve, we'll find the money if we support it. I'd like to move the recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Oliver. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm certainly going to support the motion, but I do have a question, if you don't mind. As I'm looking at this draft of the sign, it references Langton Lions Community Sports Complex, and yet our motion says that it will be the Langton Lions Sports Park and Arena. I assume the wording in the motion is the one that will be followed. This through the chair to a, a mock-up, a draft. Yes. I through the chair to Councillor Oliver. Yeah, that's just a, a mock-up. Yep. Uh, the proper name is in the report. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Black. Mr. Chairman, I'll be supporting the motion on the mayor's motion on the floor, and just to acknowledge uh, the Lions Club from Langton and all their good work, and all of the service clubs throughout Norfolk County. As we well know, we, we have. Uh, a ton of volunteers that certainly if we didn't have them um, our taxes would probably be much higher than they are thank you I... mayor luke has moved that staff report csd 17-15 langton community center led information sign and langton sports park sponsorship be received as information and that the approved 2017 capital budget be amended to include an additional $21,300 for the purchase and installation of a new LED information sign with the funding to be provided from the Langton Lions Club in the amount of $10,000 and the balance from the levy. And further, that council approves the name change from Langton Sports Park to the Langton Lions Sports Park and Arena. All those in favor, that is carried. So when can you start? <laughs> Go ahead. I'd just like to thank all councillors. Uh, I've spent many years out in the field and have worked with many service groups and community volunteers. And uh, it's really nice to see that you support such a great cause because our community volunteers are falling by the wayside as as time goes on so I so much truly value like you do how important it is that we continue to work with our community groups so thank you very much okay let's take a uh, 10 come back at 10 after 4 please and we'll deal with I guess our in camera yeah. Session after yeah. okay, perfect. Is that fair go talk to Paul now is he coming? He's not coming into the. Is he coming in he with his yeah. accountant? I don't think. I think he just told Bill that his accountant wasn't coming. So. Oh, okay. Well, the problem there is. is On a strip of sandy soil lies a county called Norfolk. It's Ontario, South Coast, you know, and it's surely not remote. If you pass through or spend a day or decide to call it home, you'll see why we love it here and are proud to call it our own. No phone, no phone, a southern county home. No. Take in the small town atmosphere, be amazed at all that we grow. Like our kids that go and see the world and can't wait to return home. Drop a line in a placid lake or stroll along the shore. Take a tour on a peaceful country road. 